Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 29th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I wanna talk about a new study in science advan advances about how heat in at the ice edge doesn't stay at the ice edge or heat in newly liberated regions of the Arctic that have lost their sea ice and accumulate more heat during summer doesn't stay in that zone, how it transports deeper into basins that are still covered in ice. But before I get into that, I'd like to talk a little bit about how the sea ice loss trend that we see now isn't just focused on summertime, it's a year, a year round trend of loss. And this illustration by Zachary Labe provides a, a good visualization of the total sea ice anomaly trend since 1979. For all months from January 1st to December 31st, and as we can see, this trend of sea ice extent loss or sea ice coverage loss is ongoing through the present day. So not to put a too, too fine of a point on, on it, but the, this, this trend of loss is, is an annual trend of loss and it's happening in all months at all times, not just at the end of melt season, not just in summertime where we see the most dr dramatic overall reductions in sea ice, but the, the seasonal anomalies for every month are, are continuing to widen and continuing to show a trend of melt, as we can see in this visualization, what I would call a stunning vi visualization provided by Zachary Laid, one of our, our best sea ice observers. So the new study, what, what, what the new study talks about is how warm waters and, and much warmer than normal waters and high heat content in newly ice liberated zones doesn't stay there. And just to, to provide you with a little bit more context, Liberated zones, recently liberated zones, particularly during summer, have absorbed more and more heat from the sun due to the fact that the, the surface of the water is dark and absorbs more sunlight, has less albedo, less reflectivity than the white ice surface. And so as this white ice surface retreats, a darker layer is revealed. This darker layer pulls in more of the sun's heat and that generates a bit of a feedback effect, which results in these very warm sea surface temperature anomalies that we tend to see during late summer in the Arctic. And for yesterday, August 28th, we see very strong sea surface temperature anomalies in the Chukchi Sea, some rather warm departures in the Beaufort Sea, an extreme set of departures in the Laptev Sea, particularly as we get closer to the Siberian coastline and running into the Kara Sea as well with very high sea surface temperature anomalies running up from Eastern Greenland and towards Svalbard. So, so just a visualization of what happens when you lose the ice and that darker ocean surface is revealed to absorb more sunlight, you end up with these very high sea surface temperature anomalies during the, the late summer and early fall period. So what's notable about this new study is that the heat that accumulates at these newly liber in these newly liberated zones doesn't just stay in the region beyond the ice edge, beyond the receding ice edge, it, it transports deeper into regions that are, are covered in ice. And this temperature map provided by the new study shows the high level of heat accumulation during recent years in the Beaufort Sea or, 
or in the Canadian basin. And I'm going to go ahead and provide a comparison which was developed by the new study showing the heat content in the Beaufort Sea Zone from 1987 to 2001. And as you can see, the heat content is, is much lower in the 1987 to 2001 period and much higher in the 2014 to 2017 period. What the new study found, I'm just, just going to, to reiterate a bit, is that, that this heat that, is, that, that accumulates at a much greater rate beyond the, or in the newly ice liberated zones and in these new open water zones transports into ice covered zones. And I'm just gonna go ahead and read a few quotes from this Yale News article Mary Louise Timmermans notes, we document a striking ocean warming in one of the basins of the interior Arctic Ocean, the Canadian Basin, which is, which is in the region of the Beaufort Sea. Marie Louise goes on to note that this means the, the effects of sea ice loss are not limited to the ice-free regions themselves, but also lead to increased heat accumulation in the interior of the Arctic Ocean that can have climate effects well beyond the summer season. Presently, the heat is trapped below the ocean surface layer. Should it get mixed with the surface, there is enough heat to entirely melt the sea ice pack that covers this region for most of the year. So that's the ringer. If you remove sea ice, you get added heat accumulation at the edge zone during late summer. This heat due to circulation factors such as thermohaline circulation and currents is then transported below the ice into the central Arctic. And if there is any kind of activation that transports this heat to the surface, According to Marie Louise Timerson and this new bit of science, it's enough to, to, to basically wipe out the sea ice at the surface. Hinting at why we see such a, con a continued trend of ice loss, but also providing us with a bit of a warning that that we're coming relatively close or at least increasingly close to some serious tipping points for the Arctic Ocean. Thank you for joining me. I encourage you to read both the Yale News article and the scientific study links I will provide. I'll be chatting with you soon.